Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer Kickstarter board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is called Halls of Judgment by Bokshaw Games. Halls of Judgment is for two to six players, and it takes the place as you being a god. You, of course, are trying to be the most fair god as you ferry souls across and have them sit down by your throne. Now, of course, there are dark and there are light souls, and you want to try and be as equal amongst them and collect them both. The other gods have wagered to see if they can become the fairest god as well, and whoever is able to become the fairest God and earn the most favor at the end of the game is going to be the winner. All right, let's go ahead and take a look. So here we have the game Halls of Judgment and all of its components. And as you can see, there's going to be these deity boards where you'll be hiding your power tokens, your good and your evil tokens here. Each player is going to get their own unique set as well as their own deity board. You're also going to be getting these player reference cards here, which also additionally have a hidden goal, which you're going to be trying to obtain throughout the end of the game. Not only that, but there's also going to be soul cards here, which will determine what kind of souls are going to be on each type of card and which souls you're going to want to try and ferry across to your throne. You've also got a scoreboard here for each and every player is going to be a token along with bonus points you'll be using to keep track of additional points as you go across the board. Not only that but you'll also be getting a box and of course all of this is prototype material and as well as the rules. All right let me go ahead and tell you about setup and how to play a couple turns. In Halls of Judgments, fairly simple. You're going to take one of your god little boards here along with the ability to make sure that it stands up and then you're also going to to take white and black cubes, eight of each. You'll be using these to bid on souls. There's going to be five rounds in the game in which the deck is going to deal out four souls, and you're going to be bidding on each one of these individually in order. You're going to be trying to bid black cubes on the black soul cards and white on the white soul cards, and then you could bid both on the ones that are right in the middle, the neutral ones. If you have a tie of any kind, then you're going to look at who has the most types of cubes out, so if there's more white than black, white is the now dominant and if there's still a tie there, then you're going to actually have those two people or three people rebid until somebody eventually has more. You can only bid white on white souls, only black on black souls, and definitely only for dominant as well. And if that doesn't make sense, I'll explain it below. As you also go throughout the games, after the round, you're going to have two of these hidden goals to begin with, and after the third round, you're going to select which one you want to keep to use at the end of the game. Sometimes it's going to give you a benefit, and other times it's going to give you the ability to collect more points as the game goes on. At the end of the fifth round, whoever has the most points is going to be the winner of the game Halls of Judgment. Let's go ahead and take a look. So now back to the board and as you can see I went ahead and set it up for a three player game. It could be a four, five, or six player game simply by adding in the extra boards as well as the extra white and black tokens here. Uh, as you can see here each player is going to get their own stand and eight of each type of cube. You're also going to pass out two of these fairness chart cards to each player, player reference cards, as well as these secret hidden goals in, uh, that are written on the back of them. And of course you can read them and look at them and decide which one you want to keep and you're going to have three rounds to do that. To begin the game you're simply going to shuffle this souls deck here, place everybody's point marker on zero and have these little extra bonus point markers set aside. Whenever somebody goes past 50 they're going to take one of these points to mean that they've got additional points. Deal out four of these cards for the first round and then the bidding is going to begin and bidding is fairly simple. You're going to simply start with the first card on the far left hand side and choose to have everybody bid. Bidding works like this, they're going to take some hidden amount of cubes from their hand and put them in their their fist, everybody is going to do that. Now remember, when bidding on white souls, you're going to necessarily you're going to need to bid white. If you don't, uh, then you're going to probably lose to somebody who's bidding white because white is going to be the dominant. However, if everyone bids black, then it's just going to be the highest black. Okay, so everybody's bid. This is going to be his bid. He places that out, hidden, and then a three, two, one. Everybody places their bids out. Uh, four, three, and two, which means this player has had the most white and is going to score this soul card. These are all going to be burned, though. They're no longer going to be used for this specific round. You can go ahead and set them aside and remember, I guess, who, who put what and where. There we go. And they're not going to be able to be used. Now we're going to go on to the next card here and players are going to do the same thing once again. This player was going to maybe take his four again. And then they got this player over here and maybe this player over here. And three, two, one. Everybody puts their bids out again. This has five, two fours. This has the most, so he's going to take this card here. And of course, these have already been bid out, so no more of those. The next one's going to come up, and this is going to be for white cubes or black cubes. Now, remember, you could bid either one, but not both. So a player couldn't bid white and black for this one, only black or white. If there's ever a tie, then it's going to be uh, whoever has the, the, whatever cubes are out there the most of is going to be the dominant color. So if there was a, th there are three black, 
two white and three white. White would be the dominant, and then this three would beat this two and take the card. But we're gonna go ahead and do another bidding session here. This person bids three, this one bid two, and this one bid three. Now in this case, black is the dominant color for this one, and the tied players are gonna actually go back again and re-bid until eventually somebody has, has bid more. So this player might go ahead and bid this many, and this player is gonna go ahead and bid maybe one, right? And after that, this player is going to get another card, and this is going to be burned. Okay, and then we're going to go on to the last card here, in which players are going to try and bid and pull all the things out. This player is going to bid this much, this player will bid this much, and this player will bid maybe these. Okay, so here we go. This player has got one, two, three, four, five, and six. This beats a four, and this beats a three, so he's going to take this card. Every time you get a card, you're going to score points based on the number of souls on that card. So in this case, the yellow is going to score four points, two for each soul. One, two, three, four. This player here has got four of them out, so he's going to score two, four, six, eight points as blue. And this player over here has gotten two, which will score a four points as well. That's one way to score points throughout the round. At the end of the round, you're also going to possibly have extra cubes left over. And if you have souls in front of you, so let's say this player still had two white cubes, you could, if you could fill the card with the correct colors of souls based on what you have left, you're going to score an additional point for each color that you actually are able to put on. So in this case, if he had two white cubes, he could put two cubes on that card, filling it up, because you have to do that, and then you would score an additional point for each of the souls on the card, so he'd score two points. However, he didn't have any extra white left over, you couldn't put black on white, and if you only could fill one of them, so if you only had one of them, it would still not count, you had to fill the entire card up. And after that is done, then you go ahead and give all of these tokens back to the players who started out with them, and then you're going to go to the next round. And the next round is going to be just another four cards set out, and the bidding will once again begin. These things are all going to be hidden again behind, the, behind their hidden scores over here. And then another round is going to take place. After that round takes place, the third round is going to take place, and then after that, you're going to get to choose between your cards here. You have two hidden goals, and you get to choose one. This says you can ignore one soul for your fairness, which means that, I mean, that can be very useful because you can have at the end of the game a fairness chart, which I'll explain later. And this one says you can only count souls for your fairness and not their icons. So in general, you're going to be counting this and this, which is four black to two white, which means you have a difference of two. So at the end of the game, if you look at the fairness chart, the difference of two means you get 12 points. If you had a difference of one, it'd be 16 and so on and so forth. This goal actually allows you to count just the cards themselves one white versus one black meaning you have a fairness of zero which gives you 20 points you're, ex you're exactly fair which is what you want to be as a god in this game so that's very important so after the fifth round uh after the third round you're going to go ahead and remove one of these cards you get to select which ones you which one you want to keep and they would do the same as well and then that would end uh that round and you continue for two more two more rounds and after the fifth round you're going to have your points tallied up wherever you guys may be and then you're going to gain bonus points. Bonus points may be in the form of hidden goals, as well as everyone's going to look at their fairness chart and see where they land on that, and gain bonus points depending on how fair they were as gods. At the end of the game, whoever has the most points on the tracker here, along with these bonuses, as you go across the track, if you hit 50, you might get an additional 50 points and go back to zero. That person is going to be the winner of the game, Halls of Judgment. Now, a couple caveats before we get into the review. First of all, at the end, when you're doing the bonus points, neutral cards, you can't put one black and one white, or however many it is, depending on the, number, the card, you actually have to put two of the same type. This can actually hold two black or two white, which will score you two additional points. And you have to make sure you put down both of them. And that goes for any card. For instance, this one here has four souls on it, and they're four of the dark souls. You need to have four black cubes in order to score all four points. You can't just put three on there. It's not going to work. And it's used for having extra cubes at the end. If you didn't choose to bid on them, you could choose to gain these additional bonus points throughout the game. The last thing is the hidden goals. Now, a lot of them are going to give you different changes to the game. So whereas you only have to look at the cards, not the symbols for fairness, or this one over here, it says 15 points for having the fewest followers. This one over here says 25 points for having no evil souls whatsoever. Now that's pretty good, except for the fact that you are going to not do so well in the fairness aspect of the game. So you could choose to go this route or not. It kind of gives the game a little bit of a change. And also don't forget too, whenever you go past the 50 point marker, you're going to go ahead and switch it to, you're going to go ahead and take this 50 point chip and move to zero again. And when you hit it again, you can flip that 50 to 100 points and continue that way. Whoever has the most is the winner. Pretty simple game, pretty basic uh, understanding of how bidding works. All right, let me tell you what I think about it.
it. So Halls of Judgment. Now, when I first started playing this game, I thought, okay, hidden bidding game. I really like these style games. Uh, the one that it reminds me of the most is, I guess, well, not the most, but Cursed Co 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 uh, Cur Court does something similar where you're bidding on tiles, but that's all shown bidding. This one actually presents that hidden aspect of dropping the co uh, dropping the cubes on the board, and you're trying to score specific ones. Now, you're going to want certain ones, and your opponents are going to want certain ones. It's going to be dependent on your fairness ratio, and whether you want to take something from somebody else could be just dependent on maybe you're not going to gain the most points, but they're going to lose a ton more points, and maybe trying to keep that person out from, uh, from being ahead. But you don't know what their hidden role is, so the next thing that could change as well. And there's tons of these hidden goals throughout the game. Two points for each white icon you have, two points for each black, four points for each neutral soul, soul and so on and so forth. Originally I thought these were kind of broken, because it seemed like some of them were way more powerful than others, but then I started looking at how the fairness chart worked, and started seeing how extremely balanced this actually is. When playing with more players, the game can get even more crazy as far as bidding goes. This is definitely a standard uh, bidding game as far as hidden placement goes and pulling the cards up, but what gives them that nice little twist is the hidden roll cards, as well as the unique point scoring system at the end of the round where you can actually go ahead and put additional bids that you didn't use onto your cards to gain even more points. I really like that aspect. I think the theme works very well as well because it feels like you're trying to ferry on these certain souls. You can only take certain ones and you can't take other ones. Yeah, this might give you four points, so this might give you eight points, but it's going to take you off on the fairness track by four, and that's not really going to be worth it. However, it's going to actually aff affect how this player is actually going to be needing his four fairness in black, but now he doesn't have it because you've taken it from him. There's so much decision making in this game. It's light and it's simple, but there's so much strategy that gets put into it. If you like a hidden based bidding style game, this is definitely what I want to suggest. Boxer games of, of the games I've played of theirs, this is by far my favorite. It's super fun, super entertaining, and it's really interesting to see how other people are playing and how to play off of their strategies. And once you actually know what all the hidden roles are, you can kind of try and glean as to what they are doing, but you might not necessarily get it right. You might be wrong. We played this over and over again and had, had a ton of fun playing this game. I'm excited to see what it's going to look like when it's fully done. This is a prototype version, so some of this stuff is flimsy, but uh, these, little these little cardboard things here. But I'm sure once the uh, game actually comes out, it'll be in really nice quality. Um, otherwise, it's good. I really enjoy it. I think you should definitely check it out. I'm actually going to give this my seal of approval. I suggest you check it out in the description below. All right, guys, thanks for watching another Unfiltered Gamer Kickstarter board game review. If you like this game, go ahead and check out our start of our videos on YouTube. Like, subscribe, and comment. It all does help, and we do greatly appreciate it. Like, subscribe, comment, please. Also, go ahead and check out Halls of Judgment by Boxshaw Games on Kickstarter in the description below. I think you're going to enjoy this game if you like blind bidding. It's simple, and it is fun. So, go ahead and check that out. Also, go ahead and check out our website, unfilteredgamer.com. We've got tons of blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. We're currently giving away a game by AEG called Space Base Imachi Koro Killer. This game is excellent. If you're leaving. I've been playing this game over and over again. We've had guests come over and I always requested this game out So I'm happy to be giving it away and I think you guys should definitely pick it up Especially if you like Machi Koro, but with a little less luck and a little more strategy All right, that's all I got for you this time and as always guys I appreciate it and I look forward to seeing you next time